Hey team, welcome to another week of the Virtus Performance Podcast. Uh, before we get stuck into uh, the legendary human that is today's guest, uh, I'd like to thank all you guys for listening. Um, I have a favor to ask though, I would love for you to leave a review. If you've been enjoying it, uh, please jump on iTunes, uh, write some nice things, chuck us a five-star review so that we can push this out to more people. Uh, I think these conversations that we're having are important. And because they're important, we should pump them up. Um, but thank you. I appreciate it. Every listen, every download, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool feeling to know that you guys want to listen to my voice in your ear. I know you're mostly listening for the guests that uh, are lucky enough to have on, but um, yeah, it's a cool feeling. So today's guest uh, is a repeat offender on the podcast. Um, his name is Bo Miles. Uh, you guys might remember him from oh, earlier in the podcast. When was he on? I think he was number 22, potentially. Um, he's a adventurer, he's a filmmaker, he's an outdoor educator. Uh, our last conversation was in November 2017, so yeah, 16 months ago or so. Um, over that time, Bo was just Bo had just handed in his PhD. Then, so we are uh, we can now call him Doctor Bo. Uh, over that time, he's been making the world a better place through his teaching and educating. He's been making some rad videos. He's got some pretty cool projects that have come out in the last 12 months, uh, and some that are very close to finish. Uh, Bo is about to take a little bit of time off from teaching uh, a bit of a sabbatical to write a book and look after his old man. So we today's chat was a bit of a short one. Um, Bo is a busy man and I appreciate his time immensely. So we kind of dove in pretty quick. Uh, we had a chat about what he's been doing, uh, what he's currently doing. Uh, he's currently eating his body weight in beans, but he'll, uh, he'll explain why uh, and had a little bit of chat about the future and, and what he's excited for and what he's proud of. And uh, yeah, just it was a really cool check-in, uh, a quick conversation uh, and something that I think you'll all enjoy a lot. So without further ado, let's dive in. My personal and business goal is to be just a little bit better every day. I believe everyone, especially normal people, have a story to tell. The Virtus Podcast exists to help us all find small ways of consistent improvement by discussing the journey and experiences of each of our guests. Bowie, round two. Welcome back. These pink things pick up still really well? Yeah, it does the job. We're on, so let's see how we go. All right. Mate, thank you for uh, taking the the time out of your busy schedule to come back on 15 months later. It's nice to see your beard, mate. (laughs) It's a a bigger beard from last time. I'm trying to catch up to you, which I don't think will ever happen. Hey, hey, I had a a beard that was pretty lame until about 24, 23, 24, and then something kicks in, I don't know, it's an extra testosterone (laughs) burst or something, I don't know. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully that hits hits at some point. How old are you? <laughs> Twenty seven. So <laughs> I'm a little bit behind. Hey, it's not a bad hit. It's going okay. You're doing it's going okay. okay. Thanks, mate. I appreciate Keep that. Up. I appreciate that a lot. Um, it's been a little been a little over a year since we uh, since we caught up last time. I want to congratulate you on being uh-huh. being Doctor Bo now. Is yeah, I think correct? it was only. Uh, I think I'd handed in last time, but it wasn't official. Yeah. Yeah, Bravo. Right. What's that process been like, finishing that up and the wash-up, like 12 months after, I can imagine it would be pretty... Well, funnily, you sort of you strive for it for years and you think this thing's never going to finish. Yeah. Yeah. It's not necessarily about the title of doctor. It's about this... You sort of start a project and you, you just want to finish it. And yeah. Two-thirds in, you think, gee, when does it end? Because that was sort of five years at that stage and I was I knew I had a a big year or so to, to really finish. Yeah. Um, anyway, no, it feels really good. It, and it, it's amazingly, you, you get on so quickly beyond it. And I presume it's like, yeah, I, ha- I have no idea, but I'm in awe of pregnancy. <laughs> and I often think it's a bit like that in that 
it's such a long winded thing. Especially <laughs> imagine if you, if it's if you really struggle to get pregnant, yeah. and then you finally get pregnant, and then you have all of that huge emotional roller coaster and the yeah. and the trauma of having a baby, and then all of a sudden, three or four months later, you've got this little bub and life is normal. <laughs> Or it becomes a yeah. new kind of normal. So I yeah, suppose that's, that's it. what it is. It's a new kind of normal. Your normal shifts. Yeah. What's What's it been like? I guess having finished it and kind of moving on to that next stage or next step. Well, you realise just how many PhDs are out there as well. So yeah. you realise that it's really just another thing. Lots of babies um, and kids out there as well. I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but that's right. I'm only really just settling into the idea of being. You know, there's potential to be a lifelong academic, and I've never thought that before. Yeah. But without a PhD, you just you don't have that currency at the university level, and so to have that now is is really nice and comforting. But yep. uh, I've now got to try and find my voice of what the heck that means, and I haven't done that yet. You know, I'm still I'm still in that sort of a, gee, bro, what do you want to say? What are the key words in your life? Yeah. You know, it, it's a, it's a hard conversation, but I think you're probably someone that's been able to accumulate for lack of a better word like a body of work that kind of starts to show your voice because I think from someone outside in not in the education space not in the outdoor ed space I think your your voice is fairly clear around what you believe in well that's good to hear from you because I'm not sure it is from me <laughs> I don't know And see, it, there was a meeting yesterday at 3 o'clock yep. and it was exactly that yeah. Bo what do you want to be in academia <laughs> Yeah. I thought, gee, that's early to ask, really. But then it's not either. You know, I'm no longer a young man. I'm, I'm a young man that's getting older <laughs> pretty quick. And yeah. so, I don't know, I, I, I think often my philosophy and sort of worldview is pretty steadfast. But um, I try and I, I want to shake that up a bit too. Because, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm full of contradictions and I hate that. But I think that's... That's kind of life, right? You, like you should be able to sit there and hold two contradictory beliefs at the same time and kind of see merit in both. It's important. Well, all right. So we're pretty deep, pretty quick. I, th- I think, um, <laughs> mate, we're on we're on time limit. Yeah, I think humans are ultimately really flawed, and I'm part of that. Yeah. And so I live in this really pretty part of the world, <laughs> which has got lovely rolling rolling green hills. And I think I've talked about this before. And it's a, it's a horrible version of what it was 150 years ago, in my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, you know, so there's, there's one big thing that I drive to and from this place each day that yeah. I see huge problems with. And, and secondly, we, you know, just as a sort of an offshoot, we have so much stuff, you know, we live in this mega consumerist world. Yeah. And, um... And I probably don't laugh enough anymore, so I'm thinking of all of these bad things, which is a, which is a sort of horror. And look, I yeah. know I'm a bit of a grumpy bum at the moment, <laughs> and I, because I've all of eaten his beans for 30 days. Or, we'll so, definitely dive into that. This is day 27, and golly, what a shitty experiment! But, um, it gives you, a, it, it totally does give me a different lens of the world, yeah. and that, that's the whole point of this too. You know, we eat things, and what we eat makes us moody in a particular way or think a particular way yeah um but anyway yeah i'm still trying to find my feet about whether uh what keywords are, are bows yeah it's a hard one and you'll probably never find it maybe uh, i hope not although you, you kind of <laughs> you kind of want to we go on holidays to get a bit of zen don't we yeah to, to sort of to settle and to read a book that we've been wanting to read for a while we'll hope to you hope to think that life can be like that sometimes too that you can plateau happily and I am yeah. in a really good space don't get me wrong but yeah. I don't know why yeah. are you going holiday? well it's, it's actually something I've been speaking about with a couple of guys I've spent a lot of time with and I love my life I guess the way it's designed and the way I get to wake up in the morning and come here at 8 o'clock after coaching this morning and, and have a conversation like this um, and I think if I lose that and I'm kind of losing a little bit of moment, I'm working a little bit too long, I'm not sleeping enough and I'm, it's things I'm working on, but I'm losing that and maybe similar to you and losing that enjoyment out of a lot of the little things I usually get enjoyment. So usually my answer would be a holiday is a chance to explore an adventure, um, a different part of the world. Or, But at the moment I'm like, I need a holiday to just relax and chill out and it's very unlike, I guess, how I've lived the last couple of years. Um, so it shows me that I need a shift in the way I'm spending my days. Yeah, so, yeah. 
I mean, outdoor education, let's go there for yeah. a second. Outdoor education's a premise that's based on uh, the, the working human or the working person <laughs> yeah. that, that recreates elsewhere in mm. some respects. Yeah. You know, outdoor ed in itself is seen as extracurricular. It's on top of all the other stuff that is core to what yeah. is education. Rather than being a part of. Yeah. yeah. Now, often we find that the people who are the most ambitious and the busiest, they, they end up doing a lot less of what they really are passionate about. Definitely. Or they've reinvented their form of passion into such a complicated form that they want to get away from it. Mm. And I, I, um, I've done that a bit. You've likely done that a bit. In Definitely. fact, the people that we spend circles with... Yeah. <laughs> are those people because we're attracted to like-minded people that are ambitious and have got lots of energy and really go for it. Yeah. Um, my sister is classic at that. She's, she's this wonderful thinker and wonderful doer, but they do so much of that thinking and doing in a day that yeah. it never leaves time to enjoy Live. themselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think, not that there's an answer and not that there's like a finish line, but do you feel as though there's a, the shift just needs to come back to living a simpler life or being more aware of like that consumerist culture and, and what you're actually doing with your days yeah and we all know, we all know, we all know that yeah that's it's classic it's one of those adaptive challenges where we've actually got to change who we are yeah well to you have to it. really shake it up you've got to make some bold decisions mm. I haven't made bold decisions <laughs> for years really bold, yeah you know yeah that go back to the core values. I know, I know I'd be, I'm really good at living cheaply and like a mongrel and I can't <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah. But, and I haven't done that for years. Okay. Um, and so I challenge myself and other people to do that too, to make those changes. But I, I, I always strive to never have a righteous voice because crikey, you can't when you live a life that's a, half the time is mediocre, you know, which I do. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that mediocre is probably mediocre to your standards, but maybe not mediocre to everyone else's Well, that's standards. right. Well, that's why I've got to not be righteous because, yeah. you know, I make some good choices, uh, but I also make some pretty weak ones as well. Yeah. 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 What was the last weak choice you made that you can think of? Um, I had chewing gum a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a cheat. It's a to- I'm supposed to be eating beans only. Yeah. Now I had chewing oh, gum that you was. You didn't swallow it, so. No, no, that's true. But there would have been I don't know, ten grams of sugar in there. Five, I don't know. But yeah, that was a weakness. Talk, talk me through the bean experiment and the challenge, and why, and what, and how, and just go nuts. Well, I, I only probably read I don't know six or eight books a year now that are outside of academia, yep. and and so the last well. I've read one last year midway through Steinbeck's Tortilla Flat, which is set in 1920s, 1925s, Mexico, California area, down on the coast. Like, great book, really great book. And yeah. you, books always kind of define your era, <laughs> you know, in a sense. And yeah. I'm, you go through... I can remember where I was 10 years ago on expedition reading a particular book and, and how I almost remember more from my experience of the book than where I was on expedition yeah. sometimes. And this was kind of like that, Tortilla Flat, and, and there was several bits in it. You know, the, the character of Danny is fantastic. You know, he's, an, he's anti-consumerism, and it's, he's a fascinating character, the, the lead character. But I got a real real peach from um, these kids that lived only on beans. Their mum just fed them <laughs> beans because she was so poor. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, gee, I really like beans. Could I, could I, <laughs> could I eat beans? For a while, and then I thought, for all right, a while. I yeah, and I thought, all right, I'll eat my body weight in beans. You know, when I thought that, I'm just yeah. going to eat my body weight in beans. I never thought that it would take so long to eat your body weight. Yeah, I thought 25 days, three weeks, two weeks, whatever. The, the amount we consume. Yeah, but of course, that's probably liquids as well. You know, but eating 80 to 85 kilograms of actual food. Yeah, bloody up to two months. Yeah, and so you know, I'm. Anyway, so that was the inspiration behind Good. it. That was the seed. Yep. And then, of course, I've tried to layer it up with other ideas. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that's that seed. I'm on day 27, I think I am, and I'm 10, 123, <laughs> 124 or something. Are you allowing yourself variety between the different tins of different flavours? Yeah, well, I've taken all the labels off just to spice life up Oh, good. Bit, uh, which Surprise. 
Yeah, although that kind of works for the first half, but now I know what sort of tins they are. They've all got slightly different designs. Has it made you be a little bit more aware of the yeah, different yeah. designs of the one's tin got, cans? One's got a nesting bottom, and the other one's got a slightly <laughs> different sheen of silver, and one's got a gold top, and one's got a one's got labelling, uh, you know, it's sort of... Or, you know, some sort of print on the can, you know. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> but yeah, there's heaps of variety, about eight varieties of beans, which, and I still love them. You I do? Them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good. I'm looking forward to, I haven't had one today yet, and so I'm, I really look forward to beans, I love it. So, you got four days left, three days left? No, no, still two oh. weeks. Oh, two weeks? Yeah. Okay, so it's, yeah. yeah, that's outrageous. What's the last 27 days taught you about, I guess, what you're putting in your body? I've had one real epiphany. The, the whole body thing is, um, I've lost. I've lost probably close to five kilos, and it's not a nice way to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, you kind of just meek your way through it, you know. But I was in West Australia uh, over the weekend doing a talk over there, and I was there too quickly. You know, classic ambition where you just go somewhere to, to do it. I was there yeah. for thirty six hours or something in WA. And I was driving home, I was in a rental car, and I was driving back to the airport, and I was in this bubble of 22 degrees in this little car, listening to an American podcast, or just a radio that happened to be an American. Yeah. It was a film that they just put directly onto the radio. Yeah, okay. They just play it, which is a really good sign of a film when you can just push play and it yeah. translates to radio. That's it's huge. That's amazing. So, one, I'm thinking about that, how cool that is, and that's a great filmmaker's toolkit, but... The fact that this guy spent 12 years traveling around on Greyhound buses in the States, just 12 years, that's it, just went from bus to bus and that was his life. Wow. So a really good film, but the idea of it was that I'm, I'm traveling along in this vacuum car in this, in this landscape that's been mostly um, cleared in a place, in, and this is gorgeous sunset, and, and I really like road trips anyway, and I'm listening to this, these voices and I'm in this temperature bubble and uh, it all everything just became pointless all of a sudden everything was pointless I wasn't sharing the moment with anyone I'm in a landscape that's been abused I'm in a car that doesn't tell me how hot it is outside or at least I can't feel it yeah on a road that's straight so I pulled over at the service station and just uh, I rabbited it onto the camera for about 15 minutes and it was all about food here I am, I've, I've simplified my diet to the point of it being so boring. But bo- boring in a nice way. Like I still really like the beans, <laughs> but, but I'm, not, I'm less of a human. Yeah. I'm a six or a seven. Yeah. And so I wasn't sharing the experience with Helen. I wasn't experiencing the, the, the world with other people. I was just going through as this bloody useless bubble in a landscape that yeah. had been... Um, it, the landscape was boring too. The landscape was exactly like my beans. Yeah. It had been cleared with straight roads, with non-indigenous plants. Yeah. So I just thought this is fucked, mm. and I'm part of this because, of, and I'm, I'm, and that's the whole point of the experiment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was a bit of an epiphany, really. Just to, you know, and I hope to think I remember that experience when I next take on all these gigs that just squeeze them in for the sake of it you know there's yeah. no quality in it. Yeah. when you kind of said yes to the gig what was your intention to take Alan and to, to spend more time and to make more quality of it you know and even the talks I gave you know one, yeah. one of them in particular was pretty crummy like I flew in and it was a, it was a 7.30pm Perth time talk so that's a 10.30pm my my time so yeah. I've got to be up I've got to do a, a keynote presentation for an hour at 10.30 my body clock time and I'm not, you know, I'm not into venting my spleen at 10.30 p.m. at night. <laughs> yeah. And so I had to kind of, um, yeah, really shake myself into, you know, and I was, like, I was okay. But, but the next day much better because it was my time and yep. I'd, I'd met them and it was light. I could see their faces, you know. Anyway, so I don't know what I'm learning about. Like. <laughs> well, it's just in, it's interesting, the, like, the parallels between, you know, if you simplify it to a point where, like, obviously you still love beans. But if you're not in like, actively pursuing something you enjoy or that you love or you're exploring a new area or something that's exciting of how much it can actually impact how you're feeling and, and, and your output. Mm. Um, and I think that's something that I remember last time we had a conversation and you were 
I think, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but your language wasn't around that you weren't enjoying it, but you were starting to notice that you were waiting for trips to pass. Mm. Is that something that's changed over the last year and a bit? Uh, I, I go up and down on the idea of trips, yep. you know, because I'm, I'm, I mean, I know the power of, the, of human perception and that you can... And we're so privileged, and I don't like saying privileged because we throw that around privilege, the idea of privilege, and we don't really engage with what the hell we mean by privilege. Yeah. Because there's various privilege, you know, it's it's complicated. But <laughs> all right, do I do I enjoy going on the same trip that I've done now for ten or fifteen years? Yeah. Um, yes, I do, uh, because I'm uh, I'm wanting to enjoy them. To, because I really do enjoy my job yeah, and I, awesome. I love my job and so of if, if that's if that's a you know if, if my trips now are a 7 out of 10 I can bump that to a 9 no worries just, just by the way you look with, at it just with a few yeah just give yourself some spin bow you yeah. know layer it yeah. for crying out loud <laughs> otherwise you know you're a flawed educator and a flawed human if you can't make good of this amazing trip that's on your plate 3 or 4 times a year yeah yeah, I kind of I look at that in the same way that I look at, say, you know, this morning's Tuesday 6 a.m. class. Like, it's different to last month's Tuesday 6 a.m. class, but it's the same yep. for these four weeks in Feb. Do you make it about the, the people? That's that's the sh- That's got to be the shift, right? Mm-hmm. It's what can I – like, because I don't get better as a coach by just coaching the same class every mm-hmm. Tuesday morning for 52 weeks a year. And yep. then, yeah, and it's, okay, what can I teach these guys – today and whether it's the same group that was in last week whether it's you know loading up on one of our interns and and helping them push their edges and push their boundaries it's 100% completely a perception and intention deal if I come in and go oh just another Tuesday 6am class Mm -hmm. or if I come in and go I'm going to make someone's day today or I'm going to you know change the way this intern thinks about this whole exercise or this whole thing yeah um and I imagine it would be a similar kind of experience, albeit a, a three-day one rather than a one-hour one, one of how you can look at your trips. My best mate's a tennis coach, and he's had that same conundrum for, gee, 20 years now, you yeah. know, since he was 18. And I'm, I'm often – and he's a great coach, right? And I, you see him on court and you think, wow, how do you do that day in, day out? Yeah. Uh, and he, he, he says once he's on court – no worries. He yeah. clicks in and it's no worries. But sometimes the anxiety exists in the lead up. It can so definitely geez, resonate with that. I want to yeah. coach today, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's... We've all, and we've all got it, I suppose. Gee, from, mm. every, from someone selling newspapers on a street corner to um, yeah. CEOs. Yeah, mm. everyone's going to have that monotony. But it looks it's just completely sh- shifts as soon as you change the way you look at it. I wrote a, little, I wrote a blog piece for today... Um, it's just front of mind but uh, when JFK was um, touring NASA in 1961 he asked the janitor what he does and the janitor said I'm helping put man on the moon and I was like that is exactly the way we should look at our job or our day or or whatever yeah Yeah. that's a a nice sentiment Mm -hmm. too right it is yeah Yeah. looking back over the last year or so you've had a couple of uh, epic projects that I've been lucky enough to see obviously through video talk to me about the so what was it called miles an hour a mile uh, an a, hour, a mile yeah. an hour yeah because um, that was uh, very an interesting way to look at running a marathon slash doing all the shit you said you would do yeah 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 it was a fun film uh, mile an hour um, in the fact too that it was it was and it, it suits me now and I'm trying to do more of that is mm. is loading up on intensity and one key idea and yep. just focusing on one key idea even though that had sort of lots of moving parts within it they're all geared around the same thing yeah and so um and that resonated really well with audiences and that's kind of swept over the yeah. world and lots of film festivals that's and huge. lots of happy crowds and, and that's really great so I, I mean some respects now trying to replicate it but yeah it was <laughs> sort of running to me i've run my whole life you know sort of three to six days a week for 20 years and so uh, i'm i'm not sick of it yet not, not even close, but I'm, I'm sick of some aspects of it. Of course. Uh, and the long run's hard, hard sometimes, you know, and I'm trying to train up again and yep. get my long range legs back because I certainly don't have them. 
Anyway, so so how do you do that? You reinvent something that's pretty close to your intimate to you. So yeah. why not run? I've never run miles. You know, you I would never just put my runners on and go and run a mile. Yeah. Um, but if you did that one mile and then did some stuff for a while and then did another mile, yeah. you know, is that is that a form of training? It all came about with my PhD. I just I couldn't justify leaving the house really. <laughs> yeah. So I did a mile one day, just yeah. around the block, just and I thought, oh well, this. What if I did that all day? <laughs> One lap, come back and did some PhD and then did another yeah. lap. But let's not do the PhD. That was done. So yeah. why not do things in the shed? Is that where the ideas come from? Is it just a string and you just tug at it? Yeah, and I've got um, I've got more than enough ideas. I've got endless ideas. So it's now about having collaborators to sift through those ideas too. So I'll yep. write them all down. But I've got Helen and Mitch, yep. you know, two close people with me, and, and I'll, I'll just put these ideas past them. And, you know, sometimes yeah. there are six and sometimes there are nine, and yeah. we go with the nines. Awesome. What's what's in the uh, in the film future? What's coming up? Finished a film yesterday. Uh, yeah, genuinely finished a film, Junk awesome. Office. Awesome. So Junk Paddle, I made a paddle from wood I found between the train yeah. station and work last year. Um, and so we're rolling out this junk series now that, you know, I'll, I'll see where you can make something out of junk and make yeah. something out of nothing, essentially, and fill in a gap. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we wanted a new office for the shed, our outdoor edge shed. And uh, we put we put through a uh, sort of a design pitch to the Monash people and they came back with a massive quote from a contractor. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know I, think it's, I think it's fraud. The quote that came back, yeah. I said, "That's crazy, it's outrageous." Yeah. yeah, outrageous. I'll do that for a day with secondhand wood, which I did, and <laughs> we filmed it. And um, awesome. and so that's junk office, and that'll come out uh, real soon. That's very exciting. Yeah, it's I cool, think it's a cool little film. <laughs> that's going to make everyone who wants to do some DIY a little bit more excited about it. I think. Well, yeah, it was DIY on speed in a sense. <laughs> Your sister makes a cameo, so you got to watch out. Does for she that. now? She does. She's actually sitting in the she room. She looks at the camera. We've got to teach her to not look at yeah. Yes. when she's supposed to pretend there's not a camera there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's quite quirky, actually. She's doing her thing, and then she just sneaks a peek at the camera. Of course she does. <laughs> you've, you've, uh, you're obviously about to take a little bit of time off, a little bit of sabbatical. Where, how did that come about, and I guess what's your intention for it, how long, etc.? It's twofold. It's yeah. primarily um, to, to just keep an eye on my dad. He's, he's crook, he's got the chemia. Yep. He's doing really well. He's got the, the good kind of leukemia, if you can call it that. Yep. Um, so he's, he's, his chemo is sort of managing him, uh, but he's losing a lot of strength and sort of manliness that he's had yep. for a long time. So I'm just going to be his arms and legs around the farm, right, just help out. Yep. And that's more just about living, just being close to home too, you know. Of course. I'm always an hour and a half away, so just to be five minutes away and just yep. be around. So there's a bit of that. In fact, a lot of that. Yep. Um, and then the rest of the time, um, and, th- and that's a real treat too. I see that as yeah. a really bloody cool It's an thing. opportunity. Yeah, I'll go, you've got to spend more time with your close people. You know? Yeah. So, so that, and then I'm writing a book, so I'm under deadline pressure now, so the pressure is just starting to mount, you know? Good. So uh, writing a book about quirky adventures. Yeah, excellent. Why, have you always run, wanted to write a book? Um... I've always liked writing, but I like free writing, and, and I'm still not sold on peer review yet in universities. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I know it's something I've got to I've got to embrace yeah. um, and tackle because it's a bloody challenge to me. It's really hard for me. It's a lot of hoops nat- to jump through. Right? Yeah, and it's not my natural style. I yeah. want to write and move on, write and move on, write, and you can't do that with peer review. Yeah. Um. So. But I like the challenge too. I like knuckling in. <laughs> of course you do. You know, the, I, I really, you know it's yeah. like a toothache. I kind of like toothaches. <laughs> and the PhD yeah. was a massive toothache. Yeah. And then, then, so now I just want to, yeah, I've got, I've got to learn it. And I want to say I, I've learned the code and I know how to talk in this language. Yeah. Uh, and so I've just got to persist. So I forget the question now, Lockie, but um, in any case. Have you always wanted to write a book? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, let's just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I guess it's it's one of those things that I think you've obviously got all this perception and ideas in your head about what you want it to be, but if you could fast forward to Future Bow and you've just finished the book and someone's reading it for the first time, and obviously it's hard to do because everyone's going to have their own perception, but what do you want people to f- close your book and how do you want them to feel? What do you want them to think? That's a really good question, Loggy. That's a, that's a great question, is that 
anything you do in life, whether it be yourself coaching or your sister playing sport, you've got to find out one, why you're doing it and two, who your audience is. Are you doing it for someone else? Because we often are. Yep. We're all socially constructed. Definitely. Uh, and yes, we have biological baggage that we take along too, and those two things combine, and you are you. <laughs> All right, so who's the book for? What do I want them? To, I, I want them to, um, I've, I, I don't know. I, for, the, for the books that I've read in life, is um, I want to, I don't want to profound, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to be ambitious with who you, yeah. who you engage with. I'm not quite sure of the full demographic yet. My YouTube channel is mostly males, yep. so it says. Yep. So I want to come YouTube's and break that. males, though. Yeah, is it? Yep. There you go, see. So I, sh- I should do my homework more. So if you choose... <laughs> yeah, I, I want to... I don't want to pin myself to any particular audience because I want to mm. really... Um, I would hope to think that a 15-year-old could pick up what I'm going to write and, and, and like it. Yeah. And that, you know, maybe if someone in middle age really likes it and then maybe someone who's I don't know I just I want to write something I suppose that is that is good that has a coherent structure and that has messages that are really quite subliminal because I often don't think I write with messages in mind other than me self thinking yeah um, I'd like them to think that it's a page turner and they really they like what they're reading yeah but, but I certainly so, pulled up yeah. on some points yeah are you writing it Mostly for you or mostly for other people? Mm. That's also a good question. Do I make films for me to vent my screen and <laughs> yeah. to, to lay down my narrative to the world? Yeah. Or do I make them for others? I mean, of course, it's both. Yeah. There's a lot of ego at play. You know, I'm trying to mm. come to grips with what it, what our... Everyone's got yeah. ego, but oh, it's, it's, it's how we tell that ego or show that ego or shift that ego... Yeah, how we perceive it because it's important to have it otherwise you probably wouldn't make films or you wouldn't write a book or you wouldn't do these things to make the world a better place if you didn't have it but it's a matter of yeah. keep checking it yeah that's right we all tell stories ultimately you know it might be telling stories for three people in your life or, mm. or three billion you know um, yeah I don't know it's, it's, it's got a lot I've got, I need to be in the summer I read this fantastic article a while back and you'd yeah. really like it so would so would your sister. Uh, I don't know who wrote it. I forget his name, actually. But if you go to Casey Neistat's site, yep. so the, the most popular YouTuber in the world, yep. or one of, um, he gets an awful lot of requests for people to meet up with him, to make films As with him, yeah. just truckloads, right? Yep. He could fill 10 lifetimes full of projects. So he's just put out a blanket rule in, and I, I, I will not meet, I'm sorry, but I've, just, I've got enough going on. And he put it down to two camps based on this writing and this reading, and you can and it links through to it. If you go to caseyneistat.com, yep. um, that you're either a maker or a manager. Mm. And that's a bit simplistic for my liking because I'm. It's I think you can both. be both, and you could be probably other lots of other M words. Mm. But the makers in the world need uh, large blocks of time that are unimpeded, a bit like fetch, you know, wind across water. Mm. Need a big fetch. Yeah. And so in that time, he can then be creative. Um, now, I'm st- because I like my job and the job requires of it, and that's what I get paid for, there's lots of moving parts, particularly in outdoor ed, with lots of trips and lots yep. of people and lots of students asking about how many tent pegs lots they should of managing. take. And, yeah. yeah, there's lots of managing in it, mm. which I enjoy too. I really do enjoy. Yep. And you can get sucked up into it and, and spend a bit too much time managing. That doesn't necessarily mean any good at it, but you sort of... I waste a lot of my creative energies on managing. And so um, I've got to try and get better and really figure out, and it goes back to that first few minutes of talking, you know, where do you, where do you spend your time managing or making? Yeah. Um, and and that's, that's got a lot to do with your... the sort of ego of your story too. Where do you... What do you want to be? What do you want to do? What are your key words in your life, man? Yeah. <laughs> is, it to, is it to be the director of Outdoor Ed at the world's biggest university or is it to to make great films that get a bigger audience? Yeah. Or can it be both? Potentially. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I think uh, the, the way I kind of see writing writing a book, and I'm very aware of your time, so it'll be, it'll be quick, but it's like if if I was to ever write a book, I'd want it to be a book that, is like transcends 
me and it's something that anyone should be able to pick up get something out of and everyone should read except for the person that writes it yeah and I'm sure like knowing you and knowing how you portray your beliefs and stories and, and attitudes and stuff and I'm, I'm I'm pretty confident it's probably going to be one of those books which is exciting I don't know mate I, I hope it's good uh, <laughs> I hope it's by miles I, I hope it's good yeah, yeah it's good that's not a bad title no it's good. it's good <laughs> yeah that's good um it, yeah I'm still uh so I don't know who, who said I think it was LL Cool J or someone that sort of I would never really but he, he had this great quote recently um, and I read it on in the, in the in-flight magazine on the weekend and that you can chase you can chase around an audience and a, you can push around a very sim, a, a good product whether it be a song or a book or a film you can push it around and push it into massive audiences via social media and just push 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 yeah. market 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 but that's managing your what you've made creatively. Yeah. Whereas I'm a big fan, and I've got to do it more, or, or sort of compromise. Um, just make cool stuff, make mm. cool products, and yeah. it will find a home. Yeah. You got to right. write or film make or or you know create a business that is for its, the sake of itself. Yeah. And if it's good, then it will find a home. Spot on. And so. Um, you just got to do – whatever you do, just do it good. Just do good or stuff. Do, or do it to what you think it should look like or feel yeah. like. Or yeah. Not because of X. Yeah. 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 So I'll – and that's why I'm a bit cagey about writing to a particular audience yeah. because ultimately I've got to write it for me to to really yeah. show reality and show yeah. – and vent my spleen. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just bullshit. Just it's put just, a it's picture just, of LL Cool J in front of you and it exactly. reminds you of that. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I thought it was very good. Man. Yeah. I respect. That's I respect funny. you. That's really good. All right, we've got three questions for you to finish off. I want the f- like first thing that comes in your head. What are you most proud of? Uh, Helen. Yeah, she's just. Um, I just think she's remark. She's a remarkable woman. You know, she just gets on with things, and she's yeah. got. She's a better manager than me. You know, she's. She yeah. manages. Yeah, it's awesome. Puts up with you on your beans. Yeah, yeah, that's been she's been cooking like a champion for the last three weeks, and that's, that's ace. yeah, that's a rubbing my nose in it. I tell you. Good on it. What are you most confident about? I'm confident in my, in my body. I suppose I've always I'm not a good sick person. When I'm sick, I'm really vulnerable because I think oh, and I know you you, you know you guys are really physical people. You and your sister. Mm. Um, I can imagine that when your body goes, you just your confidence sort of goes a bit too because you lose this big part of you. Definitely. And I, yeah, I'd yeah I'd, I'd suck if I had a major injury, yeah. so, because it, I'm so physical. I think that's why it's so important to you know maintain that training and consistency and things, especially when mm. you know, as we do get older. Yeah, and as an educator too, I've got to be because I'm physical and I can lift a kayak onto a roof rack by myself. I've, yeah. I'm I'm really quite exclusive. I've exclusified my brand of education over the years. Where if you're not physical and good at this, well then, yeah, do something else. But Bo, you got to think otherwise, man. You know, Definitely. so it's shaken up my form of education too. Yeah, I like that. What are you most excited for? Um, being a parent one day. Awesome. If it all works out, you know, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind doing I think that's a hell of an adventure. That would be huge. Because uh, I'm sort of sick of myself a bit, you know, so <laughs> I want to take the emphasis off me yeah. and put all that energy into the next the next thing. That will be a huge uh, perspective change, I can imagine. I think so, yeah. And I, I think I'll um, I'll be a pretty devoted, hard dad, but it'll be, um, yeah, I, it'll be interesting. I don't know what sort of parent I'll be. I have no idea. Yeah. That's cool. Mate, thank you very much. No worries. It's been like an absolute you. pleasure. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you all enjoyed uh, hearing a bit of an update uh, from Bo. If you enjoyed the shorter, you know, 30, 35 minute episode, uh, please let me know. I've got a few tweaks and changes coming to the podcast in a, in a couple of months. Um, kind of once we hit that 100 episode mark, uh, I want to have a little bit of a shift uh, in how how I'm producing these, how I'm making these, the kind of conversations we're having. So if you guys have feedback, if you have any suggestions, if you have anyone you'd like to hear from, um, either before those changes or after those changes, then please shoot me an email, shoot me a message. All of the relevant contact info will be underneath your podcast on the app. Uh, I'm sure you'll find it. If not, you'll figure it out. Be amazing.